Just on the transfer side of things, I'm going to touch on a couple of points yeah. on that. Obviously, James Horncastle initially linked Liverpool, so Liverpool are among the clubs who have made inquiries about Calafiori. I guess, have you been surprised there's been so much interest in him or there appears to be so much interest in him? I mean, we know, I think he said himself, he's concentrating solely on the European Championships, and rightfully so, by the way, absolutely no doubt about that. But again, have you been shocked by the amount of interest and the amount of, and the levels of clubs really sniffing around him, I guess? And also, in terms of the reporting in Italy, you'll be far more across this than we are. Is he as much talked about there? Is it seemingly every day different Italian newspapers saying different things about his future? I mean, not many different things, but of course the interest is high because, uh, again, he's, he's one of the most surprising um, players at the Euros, one of the best at Italy uh, in, in the tournament so far. So there's not to talk about Calafiore, not necessarily about the transfer market because... I mean, the situation currently, from what we will understand, is that in Italy, Juventus are the most interested. They they've talked to the uh, to the agent already, who is the same agent as Bonucci, for example. Perin, who is still at Juventus, Moise Ken, who is still at Juventus. So uh, they're pretty in good terms with players' agents. Um, but at the same time, Bologna, they absolutely they don't want to sell. They have a percentage on the next close uh, that. They, they might give to, to Basel, which is around 40% or 50%. So uh, they don't want to sell. Plus, uh, Bologna, they're not too happy for the way Juventus approached Thiago Motta. You know, now he's the head coach of Juventus. His contract was expiring in, uh, in June at the end of the month, but Juventus were in talks a few months ago. So Bologna were not too happy about this, and they're not really happy to negotiate a transfer to Juventus. And in any case, the price tag will be very high. Uh, so it's not an ideal situation for Juventus. Uh, um, I think the player wants to ponder on his next move really, really cautiously and really carefully because he knows the next move is going to be very important for him. So he wants to be sure that even, for example, if he goes abroad or if he moves to England or elsewhere, he has he joins a project which is stable where he can actually free and, uh, you know, don't have, just continue his trajectory and, and, and his development. Uh, so this is why probably a lot of players who are on the rise in Syria, they would like to remain in Syria because they know it's kind of the, not exactly a comfort zone because Juventus are a top side. It's never a comfort zone to play at Juventus, but at least it's a league they know very well. In Calafiori's case, he would find the coach who he knows really well because it's Tiago Motta the same as last season, but it's, um, it's not easy at all. No, I imagine there would definitely be a temptation, not just to stay in Italy, of course, but also to to follow Thiago Motta to Juventus. I mean, it's a well-trodden path anyway for any player in Italy, as you say, to join a Juventus and Napoli, one of the Milan clubs potentially from a lesser team, in inverted commas, I guess. And also, when it comes to Motta, as you mentioned at the start, somebody who has helped make his career, really, in a breakout season, it would be yeah. very tempting to follow him, of course it would, but I guess the complications around that make it slightly more difficult difficult and um, you said there would be an ask, a high asking price what do you reckon the price tag would be because the report in England sort of varied from sort of lower 20 millions up to 50 million euros and stuff like that I mean Bologna would rightfully command I guess the 50 end of that scale yeah 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 I think it's going back closer to 50 uh, especially I mean they they don't really need to sell they bought the player last summer it has a contract un until 2027 and they even play the Champions League next season. So, uh, of course, playing the Champions League with Bologna, with all the respect, is, it won't be like playing the Champions League with one of all the top sides who, who hope to win the Champions League. But it's still, the Champions League is still an historical season with Bologna after an already historical season at the Renato Dallara. So, uh, Bologna really want to keep him. And they know uh, probably the best thing for the player is to remain, to stay around for, for another year and then selling in 2025. Uh, it's going to happen, of course, sooner or later, but Bologna do really want to keep him because they want to keep the best player there and uh, try to have a good season. Uh, they know it's going to be difficult to qualify again for the Champions League, but, I mean, the first time they played the competition since the 60s, so it's going to be a very important season. And don't forget, they they also have Zirze, and... And there is also a massive sell on close on this for by Munich. So, for example, if they get, there's a 40% on uh, uh, Zilze 
between 40 and 50 percent, uh, percentage between 40 and 50 percent for Calafiori. So maybe you, you sell two players for 90 million and you get just 45. In one season, you lose three key players. Wouldn't be ideal. So probably they will try to keep at least one, I think. No, I can imagine they would want to desperately, absolutely, because as you say, you're not even getting the full value, are you, in that? So, yes, it's exactly. a big show. I guess Champions League money offsets that a little bit, but still, still, that is not an ideal situation at all. Um, just finally, as we mentioned, he is concentrating on the Euros right now, and rightfully so. I think we're all expecting the, the interest and the conversation around him to ramp up after that tournament, whenever Italy, of course, bow out if they don't win it once again and retain it, retain it, of course. Um, just finally, though, do you think he is ready for that move? I mean, we've said Bologna will be desperate to keep him, of course. Do you think, from what you've seen now internationally and, of course, at domestic level, do you think he is a player who is destined for the top and ready already for a move to the Premier League or one of Europe's bigger clubs, if you like? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, he, he, he has shown incredible personality so far. Of course, the mental aspect in a player is very different. It, is, it makes a lot of difference sometimes, even more than uh, than the tactical or technical aspect. So right now, he's high on confidence. Uh, uh, it looks like everything he does, he does it well. So he, there are these moments in life, no? So, and this right now, it's this moment for him. So I think he's 100% ready, especially because of the personality we've seen. I mean, the other night, we said it again, on goal against Spain, just didn't care, continue to play his football, continue to run forward, continue to try to create numerical advantage and defend well and be tough on takers. So I think he is ready because even he knows that wherever he goes uh, is, is going to be a big step forward and there are going to be highs and lows, but he's able to react to these lows pretty well. So I think as long as he joins uh, a solid project, a project where a coach says, all right, that's what you're going to play this role, you're going to play in this sort of tactical system and tactical environment, then I think any move to a top club would suit him, but it has to be a club with clear ideas. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I mean, as I mentioned right at the start, he's already overcome so much in his young career today. I think he's definitely got the right mindset and the right mentality to sort of jump and relish and make the most of whatever the next challenge is for him. Absolutely. 